Let's talk about generating comics with JavaScript. Uh, the slides are already online. I'm Anand. You'll find me on Twitter on sanand0. My story really starts in 1984 when, as a kid, I asked my mom, who's the most famous person? Uh, I was expecting the name of some scientist. That's who I wanted to be, and Albert Einstein was certainly something that I was hoping for. But she said, Walt Disney. That was odd. Now, I knew Disney's comics. I've certainly seen their movies, but I've uh, I'd never heard of Walt Disney. I didn't know that there was a person called Disney until that time. But then I started looking at his work and pretty much reading every single Disney comic and uh, watching every single animation picture, usually uh, standing at uh, bookstalls, graphic novels were and still are pretty expensive. And by 92, I'd pretty much made up my mind. My life's ambition is to draw comics for Disney. And I started very aggressively. And in two years, I realized one thing. I can't draw anything. Zero. So that was the end of that ambition. But on the other hand, others can draw. So there's nothing that stops me from using these. So I started hunting comics and uh, in 99 discovered Calvin and Hobbes. So you may know this particular strip where, for instance, Hobbes asks Calvin, haven't you put in your story yet? He says, no, I'm waiting for inspiration. You can't just turn on creativity like a faucet. You have to be in the right mood. And Hobbes asks, what mood is that? Last minute panic. This is like one of my all time favorite Calvin and Hobbes. In fact, last time, last minute panic is my motto. That's, that's how I work. That's how this slide deck got built as well. Last minute panic. And I would use these comic strips and create stories out of them, use them as part of presentations, business presentations, technical presentations. I mean, heck, I'm giving a JavaScript presentation on comics here. So uh, the trouble though was that these comics weren't really discoverable. So I effectively spent seven years of my life, 2001 to 2007, typing out every single Calvin and Hobbes strip so that I could search through it. It was a simple Excel interface that I built. Some of you may have seen it. And uh, what I would do is sit on a train from Mumbai to Churchgate and uh, using simple macros, as I scrolled through each line on Excel, it would change the strip. And I would look at it and say, OK, uh, everyone in the water, I refuse, blah, blah, blah. And as you can see, over time, my typing speed also increased if I type this much. And I was very proud, created a website out of it. Uh, so if on this, for instance, I want to search for that last minute uh, panic strip that comes in pretty quickly. Uh, or if I want to search for every Spaceman spiff uh, strip, I just search for Spaceman and go to the next one, go to the next one, and I get all of these. And I was totally thrilled, right? So it went on to the front page of Reddit slash dot hacker news. And I got a DMCA takedown notice from UComics. That just completely killed it. So that was the end of the next adventure. <laughs> Over the years, I started Grammar, and uh, we assembled a design team. And our design team, as the organization grew, started growing crazier than usual. They started putting together comics literally on a wall. This is one of the walls in our office, which is decorated with, I'm not even sure whether I would call it comics, but it also has comics. Uh, they started creating comics for various situations. So for instance, there was a client from the Middle East who called us and said, we want to use big data. Okay, cool. How big is your data? Uh, they said, see, we want you to forecast our revenue and we have the last three years worth of revenue. Okay. Um, what daily data, hourly data, minutely data, oh, yearly data. Wait, sorry, you're going to give me three, three data points and you want to predict the fourth. I said, yes, but we can also give you GDP data. What, annually? Yes. Boss, you need Excel. That's really what you need. You probably need paper and pen. And we put that together as a comic strip and told people, look, for big data, you don't really need much beyond Excel if your definition of big data is something that fits in less than a gigabyte of uh, file size, right? That's, Excel can quite comfortably handle that. Um, and as we put these characters together, we had a discovery. We figured that it's possible to create these in a way that others can use and put together this open source application library called ComicGen. It's at grammar.com slash ComicGen. I'll show you how it works. Uh, let's start with one of the characters that we built in the early days, D. You can choose the angle that D is in, the emotion that D shows, 
the pores that D has and there are different combinations for each of these and maybe flip them around uh, as a mirror image. Ultimately, all of this gets translated into code here. So this is a piece of HTML that if you insert in your code, then it generates this particular character. So now D has an angle straight, emotions angry, frustrated. If I change the emotion to cry, you just have to put in emotion equals cry and that character gets generated. Let's show you how this works. Um, I'm going to take uh, the development page here and open an example on code pen. So what you need is firstly, uh, you need to have the library uh, inserted for which the code here is optionally include the style sheet, definitely include comic gen and that's located at on NPM, but you can just use unpackage.com slash comic gen. When these libraries are included and that is captured here in the library section, uh, yeah, so unpackage.com slash comic gen is included here as a library. When you do that and you put in G class is equal to comic gen, name is uh, D and the angle is straight, uh, emotion is smile, pose is thumbs up. That creates this character with a thumbs up expression. Uh, this was literally also just copy pasting from here. So if instead I wanted to have this character, I would copy this, paste it in the HTML and that refreshes eventually it's going to get there, I hope. Yeah. Uh, and you have this character embeddable in any part of the HTML. The real discovery was twofold. The first is that simplicity actually wins remarkably well. Scott McCloud talks about it in Understanding Comics where he shows a really carefully crafted face and says, when you see that face, you see someone else. And then he draws a smiley and says, when you see the smiley, you see yourself. It's possible to do effectively the equivalent of emotion transfer, which is why emoticons work so well. You send a smiley, the person at the other end sees you smiling or they smile in themselves. So we found that emotions are pretty powerful and started building a reasonably large range of emotions. The second discovery was that composability is pretty powerful too. So we have characters like, for instance, humans, which is an open source library uh, where you can pick from different heads, different bottoms and different bodies. And when you do that, the number of characters starts increasing combinatorially. So that's a pretty powerful feature too. And we started using this in our stories. So for instance, we took one of our 2014 stories where during the elections, the uh, uh, parliamentary elections, uh, the number of candidates with the same name in different constituencies was pretty odd. For instance, there were 11 people called Chandulal Sahu in Mahasamud, exactly the same name. One of them was the sitting MP and the remaining 10 were obviously independents who were drawn in to create some confusion. There were two Hema Malnis standing for election in Mathura. One was the Hema Malni and the other certainly was not. Um, there were, uh, <coughs> and one of the things that you'll notice about the party is that it indicates which is the party that was affected by this strategy. So if Hema Malni, who belongs to BJP, finds that there's one more Hema Malni in the same constituency, people might get confused and therefore BJP's vote is affected. And it's interesting, by the way, that there is, but that Congress was not affected by this strategy at all. I leave it there and let you draw the implications. I'm not into politics. This is about comics. Um, <laughs> and as we went along, uh, we started realizing that now that it's programmatic, it can be controlled by data as well. So you can effectively have these strips changing based on the underlying data. So, which means that we can start including this as part of dashboards to express the emotion that we want people to take away from these dashboards. To give you an example, we took this piece uh, for the World Bank. The World Bank had a study uh, that explained how women face different challenges. They may, they are, for instance, the laws are different for men versus women in terms of how they access institutions, in terms of uh, how they can use property. Um, let's let's take access, access, accessing institutions when it comes back. Uh, here, for instance, there are 19 countries in which married women are required by law to obey their husbands. 
that includes low income countries like mali and afghanistan as well as high income countries like uae saudi arabia qatar and so on um let's pick another at random there are 31 countries in which a woman cannot legally choose to uh, where to live in the same way as a man and that includes countries like brunei uh, iran malaysia and so on um similarly there are 31 countries where you cannot be the head of a household it turns out that these expression varies based on the severity of the situation so there are only three countries where you can't open uh the bank account in the same way as a man but there are 11 countries where you can't apply for a national id card in the same way as a man not just here uh we started introducing this into dashboards uh in other tools as well so this is a power bi dashboard where day is reasonably happy that in the last quarter there was an increase in sales in americas and in apac also there was an increase in sales but it's pretty clear that in emia he the performance is not so good and he practically has tears in his eyes couple of things happen when these go into uh, dashboards that executive see the first is a certain level of interest when you see a comic character it's effectively a promise from the author that the content is going to be a simple and engaging and it usually lives up to the promise for a couple of reasons the first is that the creator is trying to do something different the second when they start introducing comics into these kinds of dashboards there is a natural tendency even on the part of the creator to simplify their work to make it more engaging so it's a virtuous cycle where there is a promise and that promise is almost self fulfilling and we've seen this have a fair bit of uh, traction in the system so let's create a comic strip now what we are going to do is take this scenario d is at js foo and she is skyping and says i'll call back later i promise and hopefully you catch the pun on that question is uh, there was a flicker so if there are a lot of components on the screen it flickers yes um, unfortunately the uh, artist who drew d drew d with a lot of hair and with very intricate detail and d in particular has pretty low performance the subsequent characters uh, like uh, ringo and day have are men who have less hair and over time you'll find that uh, the level of complexity starts decreasing so but you're right uh, when using svg on complex characters especially with complex hair it uh, becomes a problem so there are two ways we are looking at uh, addressing this one png so one of the options that Uh, there is is uh, instead of using svg use png and they are an order of magnitude lighter so uh, you'd find that there would be less flicker when we take a character like d uh, and uh, choose different emotions so here you'll find that this and it's not pre cached or anything now it's literally live um, the other of course is caching load all of these up front and uh, render them Uh, you know the range of emotions it's not that large so that's the second so ultimately three strategies simplify the uh, original content itself second switch to png and we pre created those and third cache them i can probably take one more question before i switch over yes if we go with the png we can't scale it does get pixelated that is true and therefore the choice is between svg which you would want to scale and png which you wouldn't uh, scale the thing though is uh, for the vast majority of the uses that we've seen comics put to people don't really scale it uh, it's just an empirical observation at the moment i don't know if that will hold ground we are just discovering the uses to which comics are being put but so far for the vast majority of the uses that i've seen comics being put to they tend to stay roughly at the same size so maybe it won't matter we don't know if the site is viewable in desktop and mobile and the resolutions on both of them are the same yes as you said it probably should be fine let's create a, a comic strip now and uh, <coughs> what we'll do is try and replicate that very picture we are coming up with a user interface where it's possible to create the comic strip from scratch directly on the ui today this is not possible uh, what i'm showing you is still in uat but uh, eventually when that happens we can pick a character such as d uh, let me get rid of the older uh, the other character 
and uh, what did we want her to look like okay she from an angle perspective i think is fine she should be reading looking down and the pose should be holding a laptop and we add a um, speech bubble which um, can be smaller in which she says uh, something about callbacks and promises i'll call back uh, i promise and that then gets moved to wherever it needs to go and with that we have the comic strip created put it into your favorite editor so you can export it as svg put it into uh, illustrator or just take a screenshot put it into powerpoint so yeah I mean, this is literally how i created this strip and it takes a minute or two to create these you can of course do this programmatically also so in the documentation on comic gen there are some more sophisticated characters uh, let's take something near the bottom uh, okay so this is a full fledged strip that is programmatically created you can create panels panels are these boxes and right now the boxes are straight ideally you want them to be hand drawn like boxes but that's coming uh, with caption text so that just comes in as plain vanilla text and uh, then you put in the appropriate comic gen characters and position them you can move the comic gen characters uh, on the interface and it'll give you the exact x and y and that gives you this particular strip which is just plain svg and with a certain amount of javascript that's applied on to it the next phase that we are exploring is how can we start animating these characters based on data in a more fluid form so uh, la times in 19 somewhere in the 1960s or 70s carried an article uh, in which a person shernoff created a, a visualization showing how different counties were reporting on their surveys and he used a very interesting principle he showed uh, He showed a fat face uh, where people were affluent, and he showed a thin face where people were not. He showed a happy face where people reported higher levels of, uh, I think, income or not income, um, well, something that correlated with satisfaction, maybe job satisfaction, and sad faces where that was not true. And he used a series of other factors. Now, what that allows us to do is control attributes of the shape in a continuous fashion. not like a, in a discrete fashion the way you saw earlier and this can be pretty powerful too so for example one of the things that we put together uh, for the selection was can we take the candidates and use their profile to create a drawing that characterizes them so we can have those with a lot of assets as having a round face and those with very few assets as having a thin face those that are young have lots of hair those that are old have less hair um, criminal cases the guy on the left is a poor innocent chap whereas the person on the right with red eyes clearly is far from that and so on right so this is what some of the famous people look like narendra modi slightly innocent face rahul gandhi not so innocent arjun singh looks positively evil rahul gandhi definitely has more hair he's among the younger ones smiling if they win so these people won in you know amit shah karthik chidambaram they won in their constituent constituencies whereas rahul gandhi did not oh, by the way it's purely coincidence that uh, i am you know some of my slides have anti congress messages I, that was not the intent it literally is a, a coincidence i am politically unaffiliated but um let's take um, uh, bangalore central so this is the result of th these are the faces of the bangalore central election that happened recently the person who won is uh, pc mohan who is smiling because he won and doesn't have much by way of criminal cases and is moderately educated moderately old has a reasonable number of liabilities to go along with his assets whereas uh, the person who came number 2 uh, rizwan is unhappy and is fairly rich and uh, maybe slightly younger as well and has similar assets but slightly more educated prakash raj has uh, as much well slightly older but a little more in terms of the crime status mk pasha is one of the youngest that stood for election poor lad is all we can say Uh, quite innocent not very affluent at a glance you get a sense of the candidate's profile and it becomes a little easier to read it but it's also something that's engaging and this was a piece that we put together for the media 
Now, while we are exploring this, another thing that we are also looking at is can we animate these characters dynamically? So what does it take to be able to take these sketches and draw them? There is this library, uh, Vivas, Vivas, I don't know how to pronounce it, instant, in which you can drag and drop a shape. So for example, uh, this is Priya, who's one of the new characters that's coming up. Uh, if I take uh, Priya reading a paper and drop this. This SVG library allows me to animate this real time. With a fair bit of control, you can decide what kind of path timing function you want, what kind of duration you want, and whether you want them sequentially or you want them uh, one after another and so on. So with this kind of an approach, uh, if we are able to simplify the characters to the point where they are mostly line drawings, that allows us to create sketches that look as if they are drawn by hand and are in fact being drawn by hand. So that's an area that we are working actively on. But all of this is very much in development and there are three things that you can do right now to get working on comics. The first of course is to use them. There's a whole bunch of uh, Japanese and Chinese sites that have started using Comic Gen and are uh, putting them, uh, I have no idea what they're saying, I can't even translate the images because I then have to do OCR in Japanese and then figure it out, which was too much work. But uh, there are a number of uh, people that are tweeting on Twitter with the hashtag, hash Comic Gen, taking these and creating strips. So just using it to see what kind of expressions and uh, uses comics have in in regular content, that's an exploration that a lot of people are doing and would be of great help if you can learn and teach the community. The other kind of work that people are doing in the community is creating characters. We've had uh, people from Serbia, Serbia, Slovakia, Japan, um, and several people in India coming in and saying, we'd like to create a bunch of new characters. These are community contributed characters and uh, Donald Trump is on the way. As of yesterday, we had one person who came in and said, I'm putting together uh, a Donald Trump sketch and this is a portfolio that's growing as well. But as developers, the other thing that you can pitch on onto this library is integrating with plugins. So uh, you saw the uh, Power BI plugin, there's a PowerPoint plugin that's coming in. If you have a framework, library, tool set, whatever, and want to build a plugin, the code is out there. You can certainly start integrating it. Um, building a user interface so that people can create comics in an easier way is something that we are working on if anyone's interested in pitching, and that would be pretty powerful too. And uh, improving the main API itself to make sure that it has more functionality. So how do we introduce animation? How do we introduce delays? How do we introduce composition layers? All of these are very open questions. Like I said, this is the uh, early days for this. But this is the story of Comic Gen. I must end with my story as well. Uh, we were working with Star TV and uh, started using Comic Gen in some of those dashboards. Uh, it was talking about how the viewership was dipping across various regions. And uh, Star TV, as many of you know, uh, was owned by 20th Century Fox and early this year was acquired by Disney. Which means that I'm actually now drawing comics for Disney. <laughs> comics are just one copy paste away. I encourage you to try and create as many comic stories as you can, share them with the world and enjoy. Comics are fun. Thank you. We have time for questions. Um, so you were affected by copyright laws when you wanted to use Calder and Hobbes. So do you foresee yourself uh, suing someone else later when they're using your stuff? So the good part is uh, Comic Gen uh, is released under a CC uh, by, that is pure only attribution license, where the authors want it, or it's created in public domain. Wherever possible, what we're doing is paying the authors and taking that work and putting it under public domain, which means that not only we, everybody, including the author, loses the right to sue anyone. Having said that, what's happening though is, let's take um, Times of India, for instance. They have a huge portfolio of characters and they want to use this. So the question is, can, can Comic Gen be used there? So in those cases, what we can do is take the technology, give it to them and say, apply it to your characters and use it internally or put it outside with copyright 
would create a site, a portal, wherever, so that the comics come out. See, my inspiration actually came from when, after the DMCA takedown notice for Calvin and Hobbes that I got, I reached out to you comics and said, look, I have the code. I have it all typed out. Let me give it to you. Let me create a site for you. Whatever, I just want to search. And a whole bunch of people want to search. No response. So I'm hoping to change that. Because if there's a collection of comics, let people use it. And how it happens, I don't know. So, uh, but to your point, yes, there is always a possibility. But as far as possible, we'll try and get the comics out in the open, at least through technology, and if possible, on the content side as well. Hello. Hey, uh, I come from a company who's serving the Fortune 10 clients. But uh, the main uh, problem that we face is something innovative, something creative, or something a little uh, comedial, or uh, including comics in one of our dashboards, or anything that we create, right? That might not get a good response from the business users, yep. right? And also the business analysts, or the so-called people who decide the decision boards or dashboards, will not take it very uh, positively. Yes. How do you think that we can change this mindset? So uh, th that was exactly the same reaction that I saw internally and externally. The good part is out of every dozen people that say, no, this won't work, there'll be one person who's maybe, right? So uh, the first thing to do is to catch those people. You ask them, look, do you think it'll work? Do you think it'll work, etc." Everybody will say no, but there'll be one person who says it with a little bit of hesitation, catch them. Second thing, don't put it, apply, don't apply it in a scenario which is business critical. There are always POCs and in a POC, there will always be somebody who wants to try something different. Now, what we're finding, for instance, is that Comic Gen is proving pretty powerful from a marketing perspective. It gets people hooked. So you go to the marketing team and say, I'll create something for you and tell people that this is a whole new rage. It actually is. I mean, there's a lot of uh, research that's being done and I mentioned that Gartner has started talking about comic generation. They actually have, you can look at some of the storytelling work that one of their analysts, James Richardson is doing. And that starts building some of the credibility around the seriousness of comics. Also mention some of the words like it drives engagement, it drives adoption, it reduces friction, have a portfolio of words which are actually drawn from the research that overcomes their objection and then then it gets in into the marketing side of things slowly there'll be a group of people that start using it internally a bunch of people started using it in grammar uh, our uh, uh, head of uh, admin for instance started sending all of his reports using comic gen because it was easy and people after he started sending it people started reading those reports otherwise it was like boss admin what do i care now he sent one yesterday saying make sure that you book your flight tickets at least one week in advance because of that we can save a solid 25 percent on the cost wow every every single person read that so internal communication then starts building the culture internally that this is not unusual this is part of the norm and then slowly it starts trickling into projects so that was our work as well we started doing a, we started showing it to a few clients and among the clients there'll be one or two that are more interested they'll say let's start with that that's how it started. And then when one or two clients do it, the sales team looks at it and says, oh, okay, that means we can now take it to more clients. And this in itself becomes a product offering or a differentiator, very often a differentiator. So short answer, hook the early adopters, get them to touch marketing, drive POCs, then show it in a project, then drive sales. Hello? Uh, up here. Here, here, here. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Anand. Great talk, man. I literally had goosebumps when he said I'm drawing comics for Disney now. It was such a great moment. Thanks. So yeah, I just wanted to ask one thing. Uh, are you also considering, you know, making some of these things responsive? Because probably uh, when you, you know, do something like that, you probably just take a headshot of the character when they're probably changing screens. So since you're already looking into animating the characters, is responsiveness also an Thing that you're probably considering with these comics. Thank you for that input. Have not thought about it. I will think about it. I don't know the scenarios where that becomes uh, important in the sense that right now I've been treating uh, comic gen characters or even parts as just images. Okay. And therefore the responsiveness of images is the only thing that I had factored in. However, the f given that now, like you said, we are looking at animation and we are potentially changing the shapes. Is there a different shape that we should have at different sizes? That's an interesting thought. Let me well, just think about it. Would love Thank to contribute to it if you. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, we, uh, you know, it's, it's an open source repository. Just fork it, create whatever you want, send a pull request or don't, whatever. Please, yes, that would be fantastic. Thanks, sir. Time for one more question. 
I just wanted to check uh, in terms of accessibility. So if I use X character, let's say a man sitting on a chair and I put in some dialogue for that uh, character. So does it automatically generate uh, like a s transcript that, okay, man sitting in chair says so and so? Okay. Well, that's a fair uh, question, especially coming after a talk on accessibility. I'll tell you our current state of accessibility on this. Zero. Okay. Absolutely nothing. Right now okay. the question is, does a person who uh, is well, fully with sight and uh, fully capable in every way going to even want to use this? So right now my question is, is Comic Gen worth it? So if it is, then it's so something. I mean, let's say I have some blog post and I embed this out there. So I would ideally want that any, like everyone should be able to, like, like how we do for images, right? No, you're so. absolutely right. And it is important. I'm not diminishing the importance. I'm saying it's ultra critical. Right now, what I don't know is whether what we are exploring is something that will even be used. I and think it definitely will be. <laughs> so fingers crossed. And the next hurdle to cross is accessibility. But you are the first person to raise this question actually out of the hundreds of people that I've seen or heard. And if uh, right now we don't even have a mechanism for figuring out how to bring in that accessibility because we don't even have enough studies on understanding how it is being used. So once we figure that out, I think that's absolutely a, a positive next step. Oh, uh, I'm not saying that what I'm really saying is that we are so far behind on understanding its usage, that accessibility seems like a distant dream at the moment. And we'd love to explore the, use, the, the usage on the ground. Right, thanks.